Welcome to the icon. In this journey called life, we usually come across a fork road. And then it's up to us which path we choose. Well, we have just two options in front of us. And this decides what makes of us. And usually this option is between creating an opportunity or basically sulking about what you don't have and blaming the rest of the world for it. Today on the icon, I have a visionary, an exemplary one, whose dreams, whose vision and whose focus has made her what she is today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and privilege to welcome the recipient of the Order of Australia Medal, Srimati Shivgaga Sadevan to the icon. Namaste and welcome to the icon. Namaste, thanks for inviting me. It's an honor. In fact, um, uh, Shivaganga ji, you have a degree in botany. Yes. You have done your master's in public administration. You also have a degree, a certificate in international business. And finally, you landed upon uh, in a job uh, with the revenue department uh, as a tax investigation officer. And you've been working for the last 20 years. Well, this is not what defines you as a person, but the music that runs in your family. Yes. How do you carry it all, you know, with so many roles to play in life? Okay, working for taxation is my job. Mm -hmm. Teaching music and conducting programs are my passion and it is my uh, spending time, like the interest. And uh, my botany is, it, if you come to my garden, you can see my botany. I'm using my, still I'm using my botany. Uh -huh. Masters in public administration I'm using for me to conduct the program, the admin works and how I can do the program in a uh, high level quality sort of thing. So international trade business, it is there, still there. I need to find something to do for that. <laughs> Interesting. You know, uh, the one thing is that, you know, when most people choose uh, something that is not a part of their education, they say, I've forgotten it all. This was not meant for me. And they completely ignore what, what they study. But I love the way how you connected even your botany to your garden yes. and said, yes, you you know, made good use of everything that you have learned. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to, if I do anything, I don't want to discard anything. I'll keep until the last. I'll keep everything with me. Right. There's some way I can use it that I can, I, I feel I can use in some way. Hmm. Yeah. About uh, your life in Australia, you moved into Australia in the 90s and ever since uh, you've been in a quest, a quest uh, to bring yourself and bring you, the people of your community to the rightful place that it deserves within the Australian community. And I haven't seen many like you who have, you know, truly uh, conducted events of multicultural nature. Uh, tell us, how did you, you know, start? You, know, you started off with Taste of India. Yes. Mm, way back in the 90s. Uh, 87, I started. Wow. 87. Mm -hmm. In a very small way, I was doing this program part of uh, Darwin Music Feast. Mm -hmm. Initially, when I went to council for something and I couldn't see the council uh, Darabin Music Fees booklet was released mm -hmm. for the 87. Right. I saw it's nothing is there for Indian music or dance or anything, nothing is there. So for their view is there is more, not much Indians here, no one comes here and asks for any opportunities or anything. So I went and talked to them and they 98, I was given a 10 minutes slot, mm -hmm. part of a different program. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't wish. I happily take the 10 lot, 10 minutes lot, mm -hmm. and I was taking about uh, 25 students for that program. Mm -hmm. For the 25 students coming with four or five people, with their family members, and sort of thing, that's the first time council said, we see this many number of Indian people here. Right. The next year they gave me half an hour. Mm -hmm. That was really, again, so like uh, full of people. Then uh, in the two years I studied the structure, how it's working and sort of thing. 
and uh, the third year i said okay i don't want any funding or anything from you mm -hmm. i'll do my own program standalone program but it should go under the terbin music feast mm -hmm. uh, banner under the banner mm -hmm. from that from 2000 I'm doing this in a full show in a Derbin Art Center or Preston Town Hall. Hmm. Um, initially started, this program is not only the Indian music, we invite the other cultural people for the dance, uh, music, drama, uh, art, drawing, painting, everything. We hmm. bring international artists. Hmm. For example, in 2005, Dr. Balim Murali Krishnan group came in 2004. Uh, sorry, 2004, Dr. Bala Murakrishna and the group came, and 2005, Mendel Yu Srinivasan group came. Uh, Srimadhi Prabha, Kalemamani Prabha, the Ganeshan in one year came. So, a number of times, like different people coming, and also do collaborative work with the schools within Australia, Indian dancing schools, music school. Almost, I have worked with almost every school in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Also, interstate dancing music schools mm -hmm. also comes and invite them to come and participate um, and with the Australian girls choir uh, the Greek music with the Alfington Grammar School and the Western band with um, Academy of Mary Immaculate so we are doing with number of uh, people different schools different culture so introducing the culture and different music to the Indian community at the same time, the other community, we are introducing the Indian music to the wider community. Absolutely. So what I find fascinating about you inviting international artists uh, to Melbourne is that it's not just, you know, bringing um, artists of international acclaim to uh, the audience or the people of Melbourne. Uh, it's about the collaboration or the you know the excitement of collaborating with an international artist that you offer to uh, people of uh, Melbourne. Uh, why then how did this idea come? Not, not all international artists are willing to perform with uh, amateurs or students but you have always made sure that you know you try and include uh, you know uh, your students or ma mainstream artists within Melbourne to collaborate with artists from uh, you know international backgrounds. That is all that is my first uh, thing I all when when I'm negotiating when I'm asking them to come the first thing I'll tell them um, I would like happy to have you because it's a privilege for us to Host, have you uh, to yes. your program but at the same time I at least a small segment I want my students to perform with you all mm -hmm. it is a great opportunity for them mm -hmm. and also it is gives um, they feel really proud of their music mm -hmm. Otherwise, coming and doing a small songs with their in their own and going, it's not. And this is they can they have something to go and talk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like in one time, um, like uh, in when they were performing with uh, Mendel and Yush Rinivas, he on the stage he announced, "This is the first time I am sharing the stage with the students." Wow. So he was with me for three weeks and he was teaching his own compositions for my Vina students and the vocal students. At the end of the concert, they joined with him. Mm -hmm. Dr. Balamur Krishna, the same thing, he was with us for three weeks. He was teaching his composition for my students. Uh, Prabhadi Ganeshan, time to time, every year she before she comes and stayed with me and teach my students. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you are Raghavendra, Wildness Raghavendra, Sri Raghavendra Rav and Mardangis, uh, Neelamani Ramakrishnan. Every year they come for my program. They never ask for any fees or anything. Mm -hmm. They, they said, said, tell the date, we'll be there. So when they are here, I'll make sure that they they always make sure try and put most of my students in even the other school, Mardangam, other well, but I must, I must for the audience sake also say that you know your heart is you know so large that you don't just confine the opportunity to your students but to or other artists in Melbourne to come and collaborate with the international artists. So I I was one of those privileged artists yes. to come and <laughs> even join. when they were in one of the taste of day when you were performing right. and we I try to put the younger upcoming students and artists which is a together. great opportunity and also the with them I put the international artists to. Perform. Perform. That's the way they they also very happy to perform and they like to encourage because in a foreign country mm -hmm. uh, they always say what you are doing for the music 
and culture you know they be this is a small help from us mm-hmm. they never say even for the arangetam when they were coming for the violin and murdang for my students arangetam i always mm-hmm. put some students from here right. vina or um, uh, flute um and murdangam like um uh, gatam ganjira and sort of thing so it mm-hmm. is a good thing for them to learning part and to work collaboratively work, working as well collaboratively working as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so this is the way it's an opportunity is created for all younger generation i am not seeing as my students my yeah. vision is to share it uh, with, the, share community. with the community yeah. uh talking about sharing with the community uh, uh you do you have bought an international artist but you haven't ignored that we live in a multicultural society in australia i've seen so many shows that include um uh, uh multiculturalism but then there's only one speck that i can you know visualize uh, as far as multiculturalism is concerned if it's an indian uh, show or put a show put up by the indian community we have a lot of indian artists and a guest artist um, either an indigenous or an international artist coming in and performing so that's the element of multiculturalism i see that or like if you take mainstream media there is of course multiculturalism and you know a a, a one person representation of the minority community is considered a big thing or a great thing because at least we are there but during the shows that you conduct i've seen you know almost a 50 50% of yes. uh, engagement between the uh, indian community and the australian society uh, how do you manage this you know like for example your event palam 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 okay. is a palam is a program which is uh, collaborative work with the australian girls choir mm-hmm. we are raising funds for the aboriginal kids music development Right. So all the funds we are raising is going we are handing over the money through Australian Girls Choir. Mm-hmm. Australian Girls of Oz. Girls of Oz. Australian Girls Choir what they are doing with this uh, fundraising with number of other activities as well. They go and select a uh, talented young women in the Aboriginal community in the very remote area. Mm-hmm. And for them teaching music choir Mm-hmm. giving opportunity for them to perform in a venues like Hamer Hall Melbourne um and Opera House and also creating jobs for them mm-hmm. so this uh, for me it is i feel really proud the money which we are collecting is going for a good cause right as we are living in this country as we left we our need country to give, and give it back what we are giving country. to this country this country is giving a very safe environment to live mm-hmm. and we are getting all the opportunities and something which i can give back to this country hmm. so that's the reason we are doing that so when i'm doing this collaborative works what i am doing is actually when i'm asking like if it is a two hour program we always divide equally different segment right so indian segment is if we are taking half an hour another half an hour goes to australian girls choir for their work western mm-hmm. music mm mm-hmm. then the academy of mary macleate it may go for another half an hour for them mm-hmm. maybe north indian music or different different segment and the best part of it is it all culminates in a collaborative piece you know it's not just that segments are uh, that they do individually but at the end of the day you see a fascinating collaboration between indian musical instruments and the western choir and uh, the western uh, uh, orchestra and uh, the other thing what i did uh, australian girls choir is now i'm working a collaborative project every monthly one day they come and teach my group of students about 25 students western wow. music all right so when they were learning in that way then these kids were performing with the australian girls choir on the stage why do you find it necessary that you know the uh, girls who learn indian classical music needs to be also trained in western style the thing is which is uh, from my experience own experience because mm-hmm. as i didn't learn western music mm-hmm. for me it's sometimes it's very hard i know technically we have a very rich music right. indian music mm. but i don't know the terms correct terms to interpret my techniques to okay this is the one you are doing this is the the uh, rhythm i can say yes but with the other technical terms it's hard mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. for them i am giving a uh, understanding for my students to understand the western music indian music i always say even when they were coming to my music class i say try and learn one western form of music 
if you know the western form of music when you're going you feel more empowered empowered what you have and you can go and confidently you can talk mm -hmm. okay this is in your music i'm doing this one these two are same mm -hmm. and also when you go and say if i know something which you know if if i come and say you know i can dance bharatanatyam means or you feel a little more connected absolutely yeah otherwise you will think oh, if i say about these mudras and the bhava mm. she can understand she why should i waste my time sometimes you may feel in that way mm -hmm. so it is an understanding giving different forms and always i say to my students learn western music learn indian music try and you create a new one for yourself because this is a, this century you can't completely yeah. stay with you and art is ever evolving you know it it For yeah. my that that's the thing with my school show it's called Gana Sagaram in mm -hmm. that one pure classic mm -hmm. we never include dilute. anything dilute mm -hmm. it's ragam there is nothing no cinema music no uh, light music anything pure carnatic music only mm -hmm. different level different thing even the small kids will sing geetam or uh, one of the small notation or mm -hmm. the tirvaram but mm -hmm. nothing other than that mm -hmm. but when you go for this one for me to do an experiment the parliament taste of india is uh, mm -hmm. form for me to experiment to take my rich indian music to the wider community right. that is working really well and how me. so brave of you how so bold of you to actually say that you know um a knowing indian uh, indian music is not just enough because you don't understand the language when when we all talk about language not being a barrier for music we all understand that you know it's easy to understand music and you know it's it's something that transcends barriers but you know like what you said you know i i've never thought about you know how technicalities and you know those words that you know you probably cannot understand or relate to can be so much easily more conveyed when you have a better understanding of the western system and you know you feel more empowered yeah. to actually communicate your thoughts and ideas to the other person Yeah mm -hmm. for me my daughter for example for my eldest daughter she is in the Australian girls choir she just finished last year and she can play piano your daughter is a prodigy herself <laughs> <laughs> bina and vocal yes but uh, this is the thing one time i realized when i went for a consultation work or uh, a presentation to the melbourne university when mm -hmm. i was doing the the presentation went really well and my daughter kasuri was with me to play uh, bina as a supporting and at the end end the question time comes when they were asking question mm -hmm. there's none uh, i think one or two indian people were there other than that is a wider committee from different mm -hmm. committee background their question is based on the terms which they are using which mm -hmm. i can't understand right so as kasuri was there immediately she jumped in she started answering that one that is the time i realized this is It the is big essential. thing i'm missing in my one Ah. because as i am in i'm not in india or sri lanka right to perform or present myself the uh, own community i'm in the wider community so now i encourage all my students to learn some sort of western music so that's the reason i ask the australian girls choir to come and conduct workshop for my students at regular basis mm -hmm. monthly one session at the end of the year they are performing those pieces and uh, The second thing is also I in addition to that I have a retired lecturer he comes English lecturer he comes and train my students to present themselves right um uh, welcome speech a uh, word of thanks how to announce your piece when you are singing and how to announce the piece to your friends mm -hmm. how to announce the pieces for Before a formal formal yeah. uh, concert in audience yeah. So these are all everything I how how very important you know you you in your school you try and groom those students to become an overall personality rather than just you know Im uh, imparting education in carnatic music you also t you know allow them to you know take themselves on a bigger stage yes the world stage number of students are now they are doing comparing shows in different schools right the thing i always say when you are comparing mm -hmm. you have to read all the names correctly absolutely because the parents are always go and check number of uh, astrology things and so the thing when they are putting <laughs> the name when you go and do wrong it mm -hmm. is not correct right and mainly to announce the ragam and talam correctly absolutely. the composer's name yeah. and the piece and everything and also the people i not only the speaking general things we always uh, 
um, educate them about the piece, what they are going to announce. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the piece. You need to do some research. So once, always my shows is conduct like the comparing is by my students. Mm -hmm. So they'll prepare the sheet and they'll send it to me. After that, um, there's a panel of people are there mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. There's one senior student. He's very good in comparing. He's Arjun and he's in interstate now. He's right. a lawyer. So he checks and one of my friend, uh, uh, Mr. Andrew Kingsworth checked. Dr. Chandrabhan check some of those things, correct the wordings and the presentation sort of thing. So this is the way we are developing. It's, a, it's an immaculate approach yes. for the entire. Rich music is different. How you are presenting is very important in the Western society. Absolutely. So <laughs> I'm, I 100% believe in this. We always yeah. say not to mention auntie, uncle, any, <laughs> any relationship on the stage. It right. can be anything. Yeah. Always very formal. Go by the name. And when you are dressing, dress code is when you are performing, is always I'll make sure you can't just go with whatever the dress you like. No, mm -hmm. there's a dress code performance. I always say all my bigger shows, all my shows, it's like a adult is sari, then half sari and full skirt and blouse. Mm -hmm. Nothing other than that. <laughs> so in everything we are making sure even we have uniform. Right. All the main programs, are, we have three sets of different uniforms are there. Mm -hmm. They'll be wearing uniform. This gives a good presentation to the audience. Right. So these are the things we are telling the students like education is very important. How beautiful. You mentioned about uh, working in collaboration with indigenous artists. Um, yes. Does that also include learning their style of music? Yes. How do you do that? It is like, it is very hard to, uh, we it's are not, not started easy. directly learning from them. This right. is at the moment, is through Australian Girls Choir. Mm -hmm. Some of the songs they taught is indigenous song. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, and practically it's very hard to learn anything from indigenous, indigenous uh, because they keep their rich culture within them. They don't yeah. want to mm -hmm. share the culture because there are a lot of uh, they have a lot of restrictions, restrictions the community. because one time I wanted to bring an artist um, mm -hmm. indigenous artist for one of my parlor so I was talking to the council they said there's a regionary things is there mm -hmm. you can't bring someone from because I went once I went to Darwin I saw a person who was very good he was telling stories and with an act singing music indigenous music and I really that time I was thinking I would bring him because you know but when I was talking to them they said no it's a different region mm -hmm. you have to get permission from this region where my council is there ah. so it's a lot of uh, paperwork and a lot of negotiation and the number of things are there so after that it was too much for me that time so I left it like that mm -hmm. but in my aim one of the time I really wanted to do something with real indigenous musicians yeah i remember in one of your private conversations with me you mentioned that you know you had uh, bought in children from indigenous background and they were residing in your house uh, yes this is part of the australian girls choir the geos girls they right. come and perform um, they are once they came to perform at uh, him hall mm -hmm. so i was giving accommodation for two kids mm -hmm. so it was really a number of things i learned from them one of the girls name is uh, shanti s-h-a-n-t-i yeah so just in a talk, general talk, I asked, uh, what do you mean by Shanti? Mm. She said Shanti means peace. Wow. <laughs> I was amazed. I, I said, you know, in Indian culture, we Shanti means peace. Um, and number of things when you're talking, you can, uh, you can see number of things when you're talking to them. There are a lot of similarities there with the Indian culture and for them. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, hugging and uh, crying, you know, when the, the depth and sort of thing, yeah. they do that. We say in Tamil, Upari, like, yes. you know, yes. hold everyone together mm -hmm. and in a circle, we say, they do that one. Mm -hmm. And they pray the, for them is uh, soil, it's a God, for us right. the same thing, Bhumi. it's a Bhumi, Bhumi, yeah. you know. Yeah. So these sort of things, number of things are there. And one of, they, then I asked them, what do you like to have your dinner, pizza or McDonald's or whatever they said immediately. They asked me, what is McDonald's? Wow. <laughs> yeah. And they, one of would the you child... Ever, would you, you can't even fathom that, you know, a, a country we call Western, yes. that, you know, people do not understand what yeah. fast food is. Yeah. And um, then 
uh, one day when we were going in the car and uh, talking about uh, uh, Kasturi in two years time you need to start to go for the lessons uh, for the driving lessons and uh, that child which is 13 year 12 year old she was saying Kasturi don't go for the automatic one go for the manual I said how do you know what do you know about that mm -hmm. no I drive uh, the manual vehicle <laughs> How old are you? Twelve. Wow. How are you are doing? I said my father is a mechanic. Right. And in in our in our place we all drive. I said what about the police? They won't come near to us. Oh my. <laughs> so it is like for them it is practically they are living their life and for them the food is kangaroo meat and uh, fishing and those sort of things. But musically they are very good. Mm -hmm very good in music they don't have opportunities so this australian girls choir is creating this opportunity, opportunity for them yeah. to go and perform in a bigger stage and uh, uh, mingle with everyone and so they think they stayed with me for for a week it was really nice it's a learning part for me to learn number of culture and sort of thing my daughters are still in connection with those kids mm -hmm. so beautiful it's, in fact you know all the work you've done so far is so inspirational and um, exactly like how we want uh, on our show the icon tell us what your dreams for the, the future are uh, dreams is uh, taking the indian music to the wider community instead of uh, whinging mainstream is uh, always putting us down and sort of thing we need to search mm -hmm. we need to fight and search mm -hmm. don't go and say with, with the indian music okay I, I, I don't expect they have to give you a platform you need to uh, create you need to learn their part mm -hmm. and say, see, I know your subject. Mm -hmm. Why don't you learn my subject? They will learn. Right. Then you can easily, you can. So I like to do more collaborative work and also to do more work with the adult elderly people. Mm -hmm. Instead of, I don't want to keep the elderly people to home to look after your kids. Right. So for them to come out and do some, some sort of thing. And the third one is using the music for social, not for the arangetam and singing kacheri or arangetam and after that you have done everything, not in that way. Mm -hmm. Through music, what you can do the country, what you can do, do, do to the community, your community and the wider Australian community. Right. So that's what I'm teaching for my students and that is my plan to go to the next level to take the Indian music to the next level to take that to the wider community. How beautiful. Thank you so much, Yogangaji, for spending time with us today. We would love to hear your beautiful uh, music today. Okay, so just the two lines? Um, up to you. Vanna vanna chelai kattum meenachi endana Enna mela munpadame kamachi one one chelai kattum meenachi endan enna mela munpadame kamachi one one chelai kattum meenachi endan enna mela munpadame kamachi Panna muda pogude yil unadachi devi Aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa